You know what I just hate? Oh, yes, yes, I really hate that. But also, lines. They tell us that lines and waiting our turn is necessary for survival and staving off chaos. And so we need to take turns. Okay, all right, fine, fine, mom. But what if, what if I just took the most turns? Lucky for me, in fifth edition, there's rules for that. Turns and actions. Action, economy, Bitcoin. We will use at least two of these terms in the following. Basically, action economy states that when two parties of close skill level or even slightly unbalanced skill level fight, the party with the most actions will win the combat. Hence, why 10 kobolds with crossbows will defeat any level three party of four adventurers. So if we are looking to fully utilize our actions, we need to understand that we get a move action, a standard action, and a bonus action. And that normally translates into one attack and a move. But we can make multiple attacks using our bonus action. So a level 11 fighter gets extra attack two, which true its name means we get to make two extra attacks. So carry the one, that's three attacks in one action. If we add a level of monk, then we can use our bonus action and a key point for flurry of blows, which lets us make two more attacks for a grand total of five attacks. And that's basically five whole turns. But this video isn't about monks or fighters. It's about druids. As they say, hold my ale and watch. Now we're choosing Druid for this because of one spell that is going to get us through our mid game. That spell is Conjure Animals. At fifth level, we get access to this third level spell twice a day. And with it, we can summon a variety of creatures that will roll and share one combined initiative. This essentially gives us two CR worth of animals to control. Now think back to the kobolds from before. Quantity over quality. We can make eight. That's right, eight creatures of CR one quarter. So that means for the next hour, we have nine move actions nine attack actions, and nine reactions around. And we will literally own the initiative chart. Now the spell says that the DM gets to pick from the local fauna, and that can be done using the random biome animal tables in Xanathar's guide, but let's just pretend, just for fun, that we get to pick our animals. Well then, open your shirt and steal some crowns, because we're going to get our Oko on, and we're going to make some elk! Yes. Elk. Now the elk has 13 HP and an attack with a plus five to hit for 1d6 plus three damage. However, if the elk moves 20 feet in a straight line before the attack, it hits for 3d6 instead with a chance to knock prone, which means we have the potential to deal 24d6 plus 24 damage around with just our elks. Now I hear ya. Rules guy, ranger can use this spell too. So why did you choose druid? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see at level two, we can take circle of the shepherd druid. This gives us the ability to talk with any animal we meet and lets us summon a totem animal, which gives us a helpful aura for all of our allies. At level six, we gain the feat Mighty Summoner, which gives us an extra two HP for every animal we summon for each of its hit dice. So for our elk army, that's four HP per extra elk. And though it doesn't seem that big, 17 HP elk live through a 2d6 plus four greatsword a lot more often than 13 HP elk do. And elk that live can be extra turns and actions for us next round. It also makes our elk deal magic damage. So we can call our elk army down upon the creepy crawly ranks of undead that would normally resist their bludgeoning damage. At ninth level, we graduate from an elk militia to a full-fledged elk army, as we gain the ability to cast conjure animals at fifth level, and that allows us to double our elk output. Now this could be a time to discuss one CR piece or half CR options, but we came here to make sure that we are playing more D&D than anyone else. Yo, what's up? Ian the rules guy here, and are you ready for this dog? You need your DM's permission for this next bit. Because man, we like to have fun for memes here, but it will literally ruin combat for everyone else. You could totally just settle for like four dire wolves, and it would all work great. I know you're cool, you know I'm cool, let's be cool. All right, cool. Where was I? All right, 16 L. Your DM will have to invent new ways to deal with this clearly invasive species as we will demand 17 turns in combat while the DM's dragon is gonna be lucky to live to its lair action. Finally, at level 10, we gain Guardian Spirit, which will heal every summoned unit in our totem's range for half of our druid level. And that means five HP every time they end their turn, making our army that much more resilient. Now, amazingly, we are the biggest weakness in this whole plan because Conjure Animals is a concentration spell. And that means if we go unconscious or lose focus, it all ends. So we're gonna focus on Con as our main stat to prevent that first one. And as for concentration, we look once again to feats. 
Warcaster will give us an advantage on concentration checks, as well as allow us to cast while our hands are tied up. Tough is another feat to grab, which will give us two extra HP per level, making sure that we won't be the weakest link in the natural world. Well, we definitely took some turns today. We basically only covered one spell. The Druid, especially the Shepherd Druid, is a very powerful class in 5th edition, and it gets to do a whole lot. If you want a less obnoxious version of this build, you can use Conjure Fae to summon up just one powerful ally, or you can use the higher end beasts on Conjure Animals. It might not be as good, but it will play much better for your friends. Now, where our Elk Lord build really shines is in comedy-themed games, or games with small player counts. With two player characters, the Shepherd Druid can provide the meat shield that your wizard friend needs to be protected. And how elkful is that? Yeah, okay, fine, I'll leave. It's, it's fair, it's fair. Ta-da! Hey guys, I'm here to tell you about our sponsor, DiceDungeons.com. They're the whole reason we can make these videos, and they're great. Are you looking for D&D supplies? I bet you are, because you're watching D&D stuff. They got your acrylic dice, they got awesome metal dice, they have cloth battle mats, they've got these super cool little rosewood dice chests that hold your dice, and they're honestly the best thing I've ever used. I just have stacks of them, they fit in my bag super great. They got metal coins, you can flip them and go, well, that was a heads, and when they say, that's a tails, you can throw them at people and they hurt, it's amazing. I say, go to DiceDungeons.com and use checkout code DOORMONSTER for 10% off, and you will have everything you ever need for D&D. Go do it.